Hi everybody. So you join me for two things today. One, we're introducing a uh, new friend of ours. This is Andy. Everyone say hi to Andy. Uh, Andy is a data scientist here in the Bay Area, and he's a pilot and wants and is kind of curious about you know being a home builder. So I'm giving him the usual spiel around about you know this is how we rivet, etc., etc. Um, and 90% of what you'll be doing for the first few years is basically all of this. So we do the deburring and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, what we're starting on is the upper front fuselage. That's chapter 30 something, I want to say 35. Uh, and I've been kind of avoiding it because it's really the last real chapter of metalworking that there is left. All right, that's, I mean, it's after this. There's not really much. The finishing kit comes, and sure, there's like some, uh, I mean, there's going to be cool stuff with the landing gear, and we will be doing the canopy, which is w metal. Uh, it's also a lot of fiberglass and all that acrylic. But that's pretty much it. I, I mean, that's really, that's a lot. That's most of it. Everything else is going to be subsystems. Subsystems, fire lines, oil lines, etc., 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 so, I got Andy the proper deburring tools. Uh, I offered him gloves, he didn't want any. And so we're just deburring away. And the first step is to the, you see the bracket that Andy's holding there. So those are the brackets that hold, that go from the firewall to the sub panel. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna deburr all those, you're gonna dimple the holes around the flanges. And then there's a couple of stiffeners that go onto each one. One's a long skinny one and one's really thick, and that was really good, uh, and that was good practice for him to get some deburring on both thicknesses of metal. And I made him familiar with the idea of dimpling via squeezer. And of course, whenever, again, it's been a while, so whenever you're showing someone how to use a squeezer, what I do is I have a, uh, I have a bunch of 3 8 inch plywood that I used as uh, supports for the ailerons, you know, years ago. So, what I do is I pull the squeezer out and I say, you know, imagine this is your finger, right? And I crush it with the squeezer. And everyone's eyes is like, oh, shit. Especially when they, when they hear the crunching noise. And they watch that thing just get obliterated and they're like, yeah, I, I, ain't, I ain't f***ing with that. So, let's see any updates. Uh, let's see. So, by the time you're seeing this, so Happy New Year. Uh, by the time you're seeing this, is this was either New Year's week or last week or next week. One of the weeks is your Happy New Year's. Uh, I, by now, I'm hoping to have gotten the, the finishing kit in. Now, there's Victor came by. Shockingly, Victor actually knows Andy. Uh, so, you know, small world pallets, small world. Uh, so, yeah, I'm hoping to have actually received the finishing kit from now. Uh, a few delays with the powder coating pieces, but no big deal. Everything is good. Uh, I'm so thankfully most of this chapter. So go back to the upper front fuselage. So there's the sub panel, which you can kind of see at the bottom of the video here, and then in front of the sub panel is the frame where your main panel sits, right? And all that connects to side pieces that connect to the fuselage and everything. Uh, you've seen it disconnected from the fuselage and mounted, or not mounted, but just sitting on my workbench, right? Um, I really like the way that that helps me with the panel, and I'm going to keep that as long as I can. Come to find out, you don't actually need to... When, so, basically, we're going to do like three or four pages worth of work and get a lot of these components attached to themselves. Then, it gets riveted to the, actually, to the fuselage. So, I'm just going to delay that while I'm working on, <clears throat> well, in, until I'm until I get finished with actually planning out the way that all the boxes are, are in the back. In, in the last video, we we're doing we we're fiddling around with uh, adding shelves to the sides of the front panel so that the displays for Garmin are also wrapped up with all the other boxes that I need for the system to work. Uh, it's a great idea. I'm actually ordering all because all the boxes that sit in the back and all they do is relay wires. Those are the cheapest pieces, so I'm just, I'm just ordering all of them. I mean, I still got, oh geez, probably two-thirds of the panel to buy. I mean, radios, <clears throat> let's see, yeah, radios, GPS, transponder, and another display. 
That's actually, no, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Well, okay, and the autopilot controller. And an audio panel. Okay, so all those pieces. So yeah, Andy did really good. Uh, you know, just showed him the works, and, and, and basically we got the first pieces together, which was those those brackets with the two stiffeners, right? And so those stiffeners are actually what hold... I want to say that's where the gas pistons are going to be attached, right? So the gas pistons um, are what hold up the canopy when you're when you're parked. So that needs to be pretty damn stout. In the next video, uh, we will actually just be continuing to work on this, uh, getting all the micro pieces together and looking good so again happy new year everybody hope your 2020 is going to be as good as mine so yeah uh good luck with the dieting everybody <laughs> and we'll see you soon